Hey, welcome back to the big board. We are uh, doing an in the house, or an in the house, or an in the house video, depending on how you mumble it. I haven't done one for a while, it's because I haven't been buying games. And uh, I, I kind of went through this little existential crisis of uh, purchasing angst, where I was buying a lot of games, I'm playing a lot of games, but my list was, my unplayed list was growing and growing. And it seems to be a couple of threads on BGG at the moment talking about, oh, I'm not buying any more games, I'm not buying any more games this year, I'm done, I'm only going to play everything I got first before I play. Then what is this? I'm, I hear you saying, what is this? Sometimes you have to look at systems that you might not want to because you want to make sure that you're not missing something that's special. And then you also want to uh, not look a gift horse in the mouth and make sure that you take advantage of opportunities that you have uh, to purchase games that you're perhaps interested in or that are part of a series that you might be interested in. So I have made uh, in April a what I would call a reasonable number of uh, acquisitions. I don't. Uh, I'm not like some of the guys off the advanced uh, after combat uh, uh, guys of the guild over there that are buying 30 games a month. I have a substantial number of games, and I'm playing a lot of bigger games right now that take a lot of time. So that's kind of uh, whittled away my time and even beyond uh, making videos or doing. Uh, uh, BGG based stuff anyway, so uh, I'm I'm trying to be real focused about my purchasing. I'm out of room for storage None of you bastards will buy any of my secondhand games that I'm trying to get rid of my second copies of Alexander the Deluxe uh, I do thank the people who have bought all the uh, The monster games from me uh, Atlantic Wall and War in Europe uh, The two copies of that that I sold and some other stuff that were you know rare out of print and in very nice condition Thanks for buying those from me. I appreciate it I've got a bunch of games, so look at my, uh, please look at my uh, for trade list, and I'm, I'm open to discussions. Uh, I am looking for to reacquire uh, Combat Commander in Europe. Oops, I made a mistake there. I should have uh, kept that series. Uh, I only want the, the Western European stuff. I'm not interested in uh, the East Front necessarily, nor the Pacific uh, system. I, I'm just, I don't find the scenarios that interesting. I owned that as well. But let's look at this stuff. So I'm going through this. Uh, I'm going, you know, hang on a second. I'm going through this uh, excursion or exploration of Napoleonic systems. And I'm having a real hard time finding a tactical system that I like. I found an operational system, OSG's uh, Days series, great stuff. The tactical stuff is really becoming somewhat problematic. Uh, I, I do like MMP's efforts, but they only have three or four titles, uh, and I've only played one or two of them. So that's kind of led me to, uh, and if you follow the blog, you'll know that I've posted on uh, all of the other games that I've played and the systems that I've played, but that's led me to this, Labate. So uh, I'm buying, I bought this battle specifically because it's Talavera. And I haven't played the NBS from the gamers, uh, Talavera, so we can make a nice uh, comparison of tactical systems. So I had to get this guy. Uh, it wasn't too expensive. It does have blown corners and lots of tape on it, so I'm kind of disappointed uh, in myself for not uh, asking those questions before I, I jumped in and, and grabbed it. It was only, I think, 25 or 30 bucks, so it wasn't dramatically bad. Uh, the uh, counters are very thin and papery and not terribly nice and I do have to print and play uh, some counters to bring it up to COA standards for today for version whatever we're on. So that'll be a little bit of a project. It's going to take longer than I hoped. I'm very glad to have Hoplite in the house. In fact, I bought, uh, here's me, clever guy, I bought two copies thinking, hey, it'll be just like uh, Alexander Deluxe, you know, that guy, that guy's out of print. I got two copies of that. I should have an extra copy and I can sell it at one point and I'll make uh, make my money back and maybe pay for half of this one. It'd be awesome. Well, of course, this one has print issues, doesn't it, uh, on the counters. So now I've got to pop both, the shrink on both of them to see if they're okay. Winner. So we'll, we, if you want to hang around at the end, we might pop the shrink and see if we've got any misaligned counters. But I'm very excited about this. Uh, Richard Berg and I uh, have a testy relationship on Facebook, which is always very entertaining. 
but I'm very excited about this title and uh, it will be on my table very, very soon. I will probably be wrapping up uh, several things on this particular table right here in the immediate short term. So, uh, I probably should start this now so you can see the boxes. <coughs> Never mind. I'm not terribly organized today. I was trying to give you a dual view so we can chat and I can show you stuff. So we'll pop this open. Why did I buy this game? World War II strategic thingy. Armies and fleets, I mean this is not me, right? I struggled with East Front 2 the other day with cores. Really, and I don't understand why you guys like that game. I don't see what the fascination with it is. It's pretty generic and it's not very historical. It's fun, but the four of us did not have a good time. I'm hoping that this is going to be my baby version of a wall at war. And uh, I'm just looking for a European, a, a title that covers the European theater and and will do World War II right. And I'm hoping that uh, this will be that game. I'm not sure when I'm going to get to that. That sucker is going to be off the table for uh, quite a while. Now, uh, these next titles, I own uh, Saints in Armor, but I, uh, I, and I like the game, and I bought uh, Nothing Game Without Glory on the sale. And I really did want to pick up the rest of these, uh, these titles at some point. And so I picked up this Accursed War, which this one I may actually sell. Uh, I'm not terribly interested in the, in the English Civil War. Uh, and I picked up uh, Sweden Fights On. And I picked up Under the Lily Banners. You may, you, you may say, well, Kevin, you just said you're not buying a lot of games. It's an opportunity uh, for uh, an amazingly good price to uh, acquire the entire set. And now I can play through them chronologically, which will uh, uh, help me uh, just understand more about the, the conflict in general. And uh, there's a point-to-point, uh, -point, you heard it, me, me, point-to-point, a point-to-point game coming out from Ben Hull that will... Uh, cover this from an operational level, so I think that will be a really nice uh, a nice way to ex experience some of the history of the th uh, Thirty Years' War. That's even got me uh, looking up some additional books to, to read on the topic, so it's great. So I'm very excited about that. It was a uh, not an expensive acquisition. Thrilled. Uh, you've seen this before. I purchased this before, and I thought I had two copies, and I did, and I sold one. And then I sold one to my buddy, uh, itinerant hobbyist Todd, and uh, went to pull it out to actually play it. I was like, "Where's my, uh, where's my Ukraine 44?" So I had to go buy another copy. Unfortunately, I got a, a fairly decent price. Thank you. Uh, I think it was John. I bought it off. I don't think he watches my videos. The last guy that I picked up is, called, is of course, uh, Reluctant Enemies, and I have. Uh, you know, begun my love affair probably a year and a half ago with OCS. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I know a lot of you guys out there don't uh, because it's too big and there's too much fiddling with supply points and moving wagons around and trucks around and things like that. I'd encourage you to uh, give this a try because there's only 50 units on the board. It's a one mapper. It has all the elements. Uh, and I'm talking, I'm talking uh, based on what I've read, not what I've played. Uh, has all the elements of maneuver and logistics that you would expect for OCS. It has a very few custom rules, so it's not going to take you too far away from the core system. And it has a wonderful, which I've posted a video on, a wonderful uh, starters playing guide. Uh, it takes you full of, through a full first turn, uh, overruns, attacks, supply for both sides, uh, air and all that sort of good stuff. So you'll really get a good feel for the system. So I'd highly encourage you if you do want to dabble in this system. This is one to, to get. It's nine or I think you can play as, as short as a nine turn game. And uh, there's also a 21 turn campaign, which is, which is going to take you, you know, two hours a turn. So hardly anything. Probably less with 50 counters. Gosh, I mean, you might be ripping through this an hour a turn. Who knows? So I highly encourage you to have a look at this game. It's an interesting topic. It's set in uh, the invasion of Lebanon and uh, Syria when the uh, Commonwealth uh, had to go to uh, to the war to war with the uh, French. So interesting stuff. So that's my uh, games in the house. And I think that's everything, actually. Uh,
give you a quick update on what I've picked up recently. Uh, if you're, oh, that's right, we were going to open up one of these hoplites, right? So let's uh, let's do that. There'd been some uh, misprints on the counters. Uh, they were off by a, a fair margin. So we'll put this over here, and I will find my pocket knife. Can't find my good knife, so I have to use this guy. I'm not doing shrink grip here, fellas, so relax, we'll just check the counters out. You've probably can do lots and lots of video online already. So we'll go see uh, what the dealio is. Everything's in full color. Nice. Counters, 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 counters. I really hope it's there. these mine are, are not uh, in error because that would make me sad. And before we get started, Deb, if there's problems, I'm calling you. <clears throat> so here we go. First one. Looks very good. Well, there's another sheet here. Let's pull that one out. Okay, so that's all good. You know, this one is a little high, but it's not off the. Uh, compared to this. See how these are set down? Right here. Set down here. These Asian light infantry are set down, and then these are up. Uh, it's like the uh, the settings are right on the very edge, but it's not taking any of the name or the print or anything off. All my hoplites and Thebians and Spartans are in good shape. Yep. Looks like it's in good shape too. So, which begs the question then: Do you do you take the chance with the second one and leave it in the shrink, and you know, arguably, it's okay, uh, given that these things are uh, shipped out in uh, purchase order number, not in production run number, and that someone's pulling the same the same boxes from in basically the same uh, uh, sequence. Uh, who knows? Who cares? Worry about that later.